a small fortune and you've squandered it all you shame me till i feel about one inch tall but i thought i love you and i hope you Time show, uh, second of January 2016, segment one. Yeah. Um, want to go into the bus story? Sure. Well, unfortunately, there's 50 souls on a Greyhound bus sitting at, at an undisclosed location right now that their trip has come to a sudden halt. But luckily, the fun part of the trip has already happened. Yeah. They rode that bus from Miami, Florida to Las Vegas, Nevada. And now they're on their way back. They Two days before Christmas, after Christmas, they were stuck in New Mexico for two days in a snowstorm. Now, they're broke down in Bowie, Texas. And they put they put diesel in, uh, Detroit diesel on these these buses, and you, they broke a tensioner pulley, and you cannot find that pulley nowhere. They say they might be able to find them one by Tuesday, but the company wanted the bus line wanted him the driver to go ahead and drive that bus 72 miles with them people on it, knowing that, that there wasn't no way for them batteries to be charged by the alternators. And with it getting almost dark, he would make it probably, might make it 30 miles before that, that before the bus dies. Because that Detroit diesel in that truck, I mean that bus, has to have electricity to fire the, the, the fuel pump. It's got an electric sensor on it. And uh, with no electricity, that pump ain't gonna, act, ain't, ain't gonna work. And uh, they'll be broke down on the side of the highway. Then you add in uh, the tensor pulley. Now it has to be re, uh, re, uh, when the diesel engine runs out of fuel. Uh, well, it, it, you gotta, uh, yeah, you gotta purge it. No. Uh, what do well, you have to re, uh, bleed the system. Yeah. But with him turning it off there and everything, he should, it should just crank right back up. Now, I told what I told him, I said it's safe to drive it down to the next exit. I'd stay on the service road, just drive it down to the next exit. There's a 200-room motel there. Maybe plenty of enough room to put y'all up until they can get y'all another bus up here from Miami. And you're looking at a three-day ride.
Might be on company money too, because uh, the equipment broke down. I believe I, if I was them, I'd find me another charter company that was local, out of Dallas or somewhere like that, even out of Louisiana. It's Freeport, it was five hours away. And get over there and get them people picked up and get them moving back towards home. I guarantee you ain't wasn't a damn soul on that bus, that bus except that black man driving that had a green card. No, that one guy's from Russia. I bet he did. Well, the other he, driver? He might, but I don't know. No, either way. All right, now we're going to move into the uh, fun thing that I found this morning. So our last segment last night yeah, was okay. music and talking. The chosen music in it was... Uh, I don't guess I should put the names out again. Should I, I don't even remember what it was, to tell you the truth. It was some uh, some Buzz Ballad stuff and uh, some stuff from like Spring Break, MTV Spring Break 1995. 1995? 1995. Or 2005. What? No. 1995, yeah. Or 98. Well, I got the message this morning. Us just playing it without any like video or anything was some type of. Well, most of the, the, the songs are banned in other countries. Which we really don't fucking care. Yeah, I don't know. Now, the one, it was monitored by its owner. So I guess uh, YouTube's going to put ads in it. Which doesn't bother me. It makes me it more, seem more legit. Um, we don't. We can take the sponsors out of that one. Well, you know, that he, if he's sitting there monitoring... Well, they can't really monitor it. Uh, it's, it's a... Theoretically saying. Well, us playing your song, the way I see it, hell, the radios don't play it no more. You might as well not get pissy because we did it. Yeah. You know, I played, uh, but we're not going to give you no damn, uh, you PPD, know, PD, uh, um, uh, what do you call it when, when a, when a person writes a song and, and when they, when they keep playing it, they make a, uh, they make a check off of it. Oh, uh, uh, it's like when the oil field have a revenue check. No, it's uh, it's like when the oil field has a, a well on your thing. It's like mineral rights. Yeah. Yeah, that that stuff. Um, we might delete it. We might not. I don't know. Oh. I'll look at the email tomorrow and see, see what goes on. Hey, um, you know what? <clears throat> Roy Clark's dead, ain't he? I don't think he's going to get it. Two tears in a bucket. That's all I can fucking say. If you don't oh, like Oh, we it. just played uh, uh, dead artist music. Ain't nobody bitch about it then. Tupac, Biggie. Well, hell, uh, if you look at George it, Jones. If you look at it, what we play... Uh, None of it's mainstream, really. Well... Some of the country is, but none of it's really mainstream. And some of that shit they play on the air right now, it should never made it. I don't even know who told these motherfuckers they could sing. Oh, look, okay, it's going something else. Because hell, half of them couldn't carry a tune in a five-gallon bucket. Well, remember what I told you about that uh, that one certain age girl earlier? She quit. And... Yeah. Okay, no names. But if you're 21 and you're messing around with a 16-year-old, I don't think there's any legal thing saying, I'm going to stay with her and it'll be okay. Well, apparently what I understood and I heard to the grapevine that she did that as a ploy to get him to, uh, to do something for her and it fucking backfired on her because now the parents are making her... Uh, making him marry her. Well, he gets to be 17 to marry. Well, if, if the parents sign a paper, you yeah, can get married at 16. I don't know. I could have waited a year, six months, to turn 17. At least it's a little more legal. Boy. I don't think I'd knock it up, though. 16 years old. Good God. And get pregnant, you done through your fucking life away. 
Well, on one note, she does have a, a, a high school diploma or something already, don't she? Or from what everybody said? Oh, yeah. What I understand, she's been homeschooled by her, by her mother. That's one benefit. Well, once you get oh. to where the kid can be babysitted, you can actually get a job. I'm going to tell you this. Now, when the oil field finally does shut down fully and the daddy uh, ain't got a job, he's... Well, how about the daddy don't have a job now? Yeah. He probably still living with mom and daddy. Oh. Um, straight up? Actually, I bet that motherfucker thinks through his mind. I got me a good looking old lady. You got you a case. That ain't no shit. Oh, you just uh, hating. No, I've read the laws. I know what these old men do. <laughs> you I, go to jail. I know, I know that they, they said she was homeschooled and everything. But I've met, I've met some kids that's been homeschooled, and they as dumb as that plastic cup sitting on the dash of this truck. Actually, that's pretty smart. Copenhagen spit could be a major industry. You take rust off the bumpers. Uh, that damn sure get people to leave you alone and make people. If you, get, you got somebody that needs to throw up, let them drink that cup. Yeah, especially whatever happened in this one last night. I don't know what happened there. Do I don't know, but that looks pretty sick. Don't spill that motherfucker. And when it dries out, like you have a little bit in the bottle and it kind of dries out, that is even worse. That smell illuminates the whole earth. Boy, I'll tell you what. It's like cow shit. You get that shit on your clothes and ride 200 miles, you'll be needing your bath by the time you get to the house. Now, you uh, won't be able to stand yourself. In my industry, uh, we got that stuff we odorize with. And, you know, one little drop will do, like, this whole town. For all right? Um, they said you drop a little bit on, like, your boot or whatever, that smell never comes out of your boot. I'm not surprised. And you can't walk through stores like that. Be like, there's a guy, there's a leak. Boy. That's a good way to clear out a block, ain't it? Yeah. Well, they've had times down DFW where, uh, because it, it's transported in big tanker trucks, you know. Yeah. And they don't close that leak down good. Uh, I mean, that uh, that valve down good and tight, and it just sits there and drops every couple minutes on that road. <laughs> you see, uh, that's what I asked my supervisor. I was like, uh, is this, like, real, or is this, like, somebody didn't tighten down a valve? And uh, just went driving around DFW. Well, it'd be a good way to get at somebody. Better to pick up. Yeah. I don't know. That'd be bad for us. I see now. I see no deal. Well, it's been it's been year several years ago, and I can't say no names because I didn't really know the names of the people, but uh. It was a, a man, I'm going to say a man and a woman, but they, they were fairly young in their, their mid-30s. And they'd been out camping at some lake down around the Metroplex. And uh, they'd used charcoal grill, and then they had some propane bottles, some of them small plastic propane bottles in the back. They made plastic propane bottles? No, the, the, oh, the metal ones. The metal ones, but they had a plastic cap in Yeah. A ring in them. Well, somehow they was running down the road in one of them kit containers well, it was still full got inside that, that ch hot charcoal with the air blowing on it and it heated that canister up and it blew it through the back window and when it got inside the cab it blew up and it burnt him and her and it, it uh, he actually died about a day later from his burns and while I was there at that burn unit, my, uh, that was back when, uh, yeah. what's the name got blew up? And, uh, she actually died from that shit. But you, you know, you don't transport shit like that with, with, uh. You don't be a cheap bastard and use propane anyways. You always go natural gas. Well, it's hard, it's hard to use natural gas on a charcoal pit. Uh, no, not. 
He's going to have credit and get it inside your house. You just put your own valve in there. As long as you don't touch our side. Well, I used to just use charcoal. It's worked for thousands of years. No, not really thousands of years because they didn't have charcoal up until a certain time. I bet well, that's something you could Google when the first charcoal brick cat came out. Oh, that was something to do. Remember the, the men who built America? That was something in there. Pretty sure. Actually, charcoal was was uh, was used to filter whiskey. Yeah. Maybe we ought to go down and get a bag of charcoal and start filming our filtering our show. We didn't need one of them beep buttons. Beep? Yeah. <sighs> uh, charcoal briquettes patented in 1897 by Ellsworth Zoyer, the, the briquette really took off in the 1920s. Henry Ford, in collaboration with Thomas Edison and E.B. Kingsford, made lots of them from sawdust and wood scraps from Ford's Detroit auto plants. Car bodies are made a lot of wood in those days. What are you driving now? Oh, Model 2 before. <laughs> well, Ford made a, a all hemp car. All hemp? Well, and if anybody watches this, it's really educated. Uh, a marijuana is just a plant. If you don't make it where you can burn it, you, you can make certain species of it that's like wool. And you made that into like a heart. You couldn't crack it or anything with a sledgehammer. I remember seeing that. Yeah. The reason I pulled you over today, sir, the car is raking of marijuana. No, that, that type of, it don't smell like that. Honest officer. You go back there and put It's a good way to fucking transport it. You can go back there and put your lips on that tailpipe and see if you can get high, but I guarantee you, you won't. <laughs> it has a lot of uses, though. Clothes, the, uh... Maybe they ought to start building airplanes out of that shit. <coughs> I don't know about that. Well, okay. hey, if they can build... They can build a black box to withstand a, a plane... withstand a plane crash... Then why can't they build a plane out of the same material they build a black box? So it why can't they build a plane or a standard black box? Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, that's interesting theory. One of the, the major documents that started in the United States is made out of hemp paper. Mm -hmm. It was actually one of the cash crops before we made somebody made decisions. It was probably the Masons or somebody. If they were on the ship. Or the church. <clears throat> we might do Monday through Friday as our, our down week. And just uh, play old <laughs> episodes of YouTube. Mm. And, and just sit here. Um, Stay around. Can we take what we're doing? We're going to these Mexicans get this house built across the street. I'm tired of listening to that damn generator. Plus, some three good looking old ladies over there, though. Yeah, they do. You're going to have about 14 kids. Ain't nothing but a baby factory over there. What was that shit I heard earlier? About a Mexican, uh, the roof in the house. Fall, have a baby, get right back up, you go. The baby, get up there and finish the roof because they don't want to do shitty work. <laughs> we brought them over here. Hey. We pay them. Well, 
Well, I wonder if that that boy is a big tacos bitch now. Well, they don't really have tacos. That's a Tex-Mex thing. Oh. Okay. Big sombreros, bitch. Hey, Rudy, look at that one. You got a bottle in here? No, but there's a cup in the back. The next time you step out, grab me that. Yeah. Uh, that don't look too kosher. I don't know what that is. Weird fungus grew on top of it. Maybe it's like the, uh, what was that? That old, just cheesy ass show where this alien thing had come out and we call it the cream or something? Are you talking about, uh, uh the stuff? The stuff. Stuff grew on top of this. Yeah, and it would eat the, it would eat the insides of people. But they were selling it as fucking, uh, what Turn your back lights on. They were selling it as, as, uh, 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 yogurt. Yogurt. That's a good idea. God damn, I haven't seen that movie in years. You get it? Yeah. That's some of the, that was one of the cheesiest movies ever. Oh, it's like, it, it goes back in there like the blob and, and yeah. Uh, the Stephen King had some good ones, I guess, were 80s, 90s, uh, uh, The Langoliers. That was a pretty goddamn good show. I don't think we would think it was that cool nowadays. But back then, we can bring up the synopsis. You, uh, you remember when, uh, them two boys was out there farming, we, uh, we started telling them about that, that, about how they could see the light back off in the back in the shadow of, of, of town. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I told him it was the Langoliers and they was coming through the woods. Had them little bastards bawling out there in the middle of the woods. Not really sure the, the whole purpose of that movie. I know that they killed, they had to kill that one guy but they landed. All right, let me put a dip in. Well, I got the plot. The plot teller thing, basically, you need to know. Except what Stephen King put in the book that they can't put into a, uh, a movie. I'm not really sure how the, the plane wound up back a day in the past. Yeah, I think it was all about time warps and shit. On a cross-country ride-off flight from Los Angeles to Boston, 10 passengers awakened to find that the crew and most of their fellow passengers had disappeared. Leaving the airliner under the control of the autopilot, they realized that only those who were sleeping are now left on the plane. All through the airline pilot, Brian Engel takes control from the autopilot and lands the plane to bring remain despite protests from irritable Craig Toomey. Upon arrival, they find that the airport abandoned no sounds of life hearing. Crossing sounds sound like radio static. The group agrees to leave before it arrives based on the belief that they have flown through a time rip into the past. They fly back into the time rip and return them to their own time. Passengers took work together to refuel the plane. The noise gets louder, having lost touch with reality. Craig believes the others be manif manifestations of the Langoliers, monsters he feared as a child. They go after those who are lazy and waste time. He stabs Dinah and young girl, a young blind girl with psychic powers, and kills Don before being subdued. While the plane is in its final preparations to depart Bangor, Dinah telepathically communicates with Craig and shows him that it is important. 
board meeting so they can be held on the runway. Hundreds of the monsters arrive, floating spears, chainsaw-like teeth, and these trails of black nothingness in their wake. They initially head for the plane, but Craig's presence on the runway distracts them long enough to allow Engel to start the plane as they turn to the last passengers, watch the rest of the land fall into a foamless black void. Uh, basically, when I go back to the time whip, rip, uh, they have to be asleep. One person has to be awake to fly the plane, so it comes up to all that concept. And um, there was a British guy who's a secret agent for the British. Uh, so the person stays awake, dies as they go back through. All that shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. There was another one of them movies that had to do with a ship. That went back into time. Now, you have uh, had yeah. to, had to do with back in when right before Pearl Harbor was attacked. It was a carrier, and it went into a time warp. Because this that Lingleers was first of a two part series, and uh, I can't remember really how. How it all come about, but no, it's something good you don't see more is tales from the crypt. I told them during the week while you're at work. No, oh. read that email address or or write that email address down for me. That's a fake. I'm gonna just say it. Ella E L L A E L L A B O I S O N B O I S O 2000 at gmail.com Well, I can't remember what the movie that name of that movie was called, but it was about, it had to do with the uh, U.S. U.S. On the front of the movie, did it have a carrier kind of um, dark seas? Floating? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it did, it went through a time warp, but they launched two planes off the carrier before it went into that time warp where it was squealing and shit like that. When they come out, they was back the same day as Pearl Harbor was fixing to be attacked. And them two, they launched, they launched two birds off that carrier, if I can remember correctly, and they went out and they were searching the distance from where they were trying to figure out where they were at and that's when they saw these t these zeros which was the kamikazes uh scraping a, a yacht and uh they engaged them two uh zeros and shot them down and then they they uh they started pull started to try to pull them back and it went back through the time warp again I, well, I can't remember how there was another part about a, something about a going to an island or something like that. Well, all right, uh, this is in the first segment. We'll be back.